Joe. Another video here. Um, here's a question. Hi, Joe. Should I do quick flips or should I hold properties for the long term? And this is from Sheena in Vermont. Well, Sheena, there's there's two ways you can do this. If you do uh, if you do the long term stuff, that's typically considered what I consider passive investing. And I, I do a lot of property like that. I have a lot of property in different states all over the country, and I don't manage it myself. As a matter of fact, I bought it in areas where I thought it was going to make the most sense to buy, where I thought it was going to appreciate the most, and where it would be also good, stable markets uh, with a little bit lower price properties. I try to stay between 100 and 200,000. I probably typically stay around 150 thousand dollars because those properties, uh, even if I mortgage them, uh, you know, fully mortgage them, I can still, uh, you know, break even on my cash flow with the income that's coming in from rent, and sometimes have a small positive cash flow. Sometimes I even take a, a small negative cash flow because it makes sense with the tax savings that I get. Uh, depending on the property, how we structure the deal, how we set it up, and, and what the deal is uh, with that. So you want to have passive investing, and, and I, I'm going to suggest that everybody have passive investments. I don't care if you're a realtor, if you're a real estate investor, everybody should own uh, this type of uh, investment because it's better than stocks, it's better than mutual funds, it gets a better, much better return. I believe it's safer because it's uh, you know investment uh, property that's secured against real estate. You ought to have passive investing. But I also find that uh, most people uh, aren't uh, they, they get involved or entrepreneur or entrepreneurial minded and they want to have their own business. And if you want to have a business, you've got to have cash flow. That means you've got to do the flips. You've got to create cash flow. If you create cash flow just by holding rental property, the cash flow is going to be so small it's not going to be uh, easy to do unless you have a lot of capital to invest. If you have you know hundreds and hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars to invest and you can buy a bunch of property and it can create cash flow, that's that's great. But most of the time uh, people don't have big chunks of money to invest. They want to buy a bunch of properties. Uh, they can do that but it's going to, uh, they're going to have to pay the mortgage so they're not going to have much income from holding the property. They're going to get income instead through flipping properties. And you can flip properties a lot of different ways. You can buy them under value and sell them. You can buy them uh, at market value on terms and sell them for more than their value by and take an assignment fee or uh, uh, you know a lease option fee uh, and and uh, uh, so, so there, and you, or you could lease option them, and you could keep them, and you can take the lease option fee, and that, that way you, you you do both, which is probably the best way to do it. And that's how the millionaire matrix is structured, by the way, where you're buying the properties, keeping them, and you're getting lease option fees, so you're getting chunks of money, and you're getting long term uh, value from the from the property. So you want to have the cash flow. No business can survive without cash flow. And if you look at my business back in 1986, 87, 88, 89, when I was growing my, you know, buying that first $17 million worth of, of, of property that I that I purchased and, and when the market turned around and crashed and I lost it all uh, back in 91, uh, when, when you look at the way that I structured it then, it was, it, it didn't have, uh, it didn't have income. Uh, it had, it was based on loans, it was based on appreciation, it was based on building the property and then eventually selling and making a chunk of money, but it, it took six months, a year, two years uh, on some of those deals to make them work. And uh, the market uh, hit me in the middle of it and took me down. Now, if the market had stayed solid and I'd been able to ride it through, uh, maybe that wouldn't have happened that way, but I have a feeling is uh, you know eventually it's going to hit you if you're doing your business that way. If you're counting on appreciation, if you've got high leverage that uh, is not going to turn around, and you don't have any plans to keep it for the long term, you're not going to be able to sustain a business like that because you got to eat, you got to you got to you know pay your way, and you want to have a good quality of life now. So you want to be able to, to create that income, and that's what the flipping is all about. So the first thing I teach people when they come into the mentor program is how to flip deals quickly, make money, make cash. You're you're in the deal, out of the deal, and you're no longer responsible for the deal once you're out of it. Uh, once you learn how to do that, and once you start creating cash that way, then I'm going to say, okay, now it's time to start keeping some of these properties for the long term. You can still make money. You can make the short term uh, cash flow if you use the, the the subject two. You buy it subject two and sell it on a lease option. You can still make a chunk of money from the lease option fee. Plus, you'll be able to keep that property for the long term. It just uh, it depends on what type of property you're doing. If you're dealing with six and seven hundred thousand dollar properties, it's harder to do it with those. So you'll want to move out of the your state or your area and into areas where you can buy between 125, 100,000 100, and 200,000 or 250. 
because you can generally uh, keep those properties long term without having to worry about uh, not being able to cover the mortgage or having to worry about negative cash flow. So hope that helps. Thanks.